In this video, we're going to discuss what public goods are in the context of economics. So a public good is any type of good that is both non-rivalrous and non-excludable. And what non-rivalrous means is that the marginal cost of providing this good to one extra person would be zero. So let's take national defense as an example. So let's say the military of Spain, so let's take Spain's military, their national defense, and you're thinking of moving to Spain. So if you move to Spain, what is going to be the marginal cost of Spain's national defense? Well, it's going to be zero, right? If you move to Spain tomorrow, it's not like the Spanish government's going to say, hey, we need to get some more military. This person just moved here. So really, the marginal cost of, of national defense is zero. How, whether it's one extra person, whatever, it's still going to be the same cost. And so we call that non-rivalrous. Now, something that would be rivalrous, for example, if you think of a slice of pizza, if I eat a slice of pizza, that means you cannot eat that slice of pizza because I just ate it, so it's rivalrous, right? So national defense or things like a, a street light, for example. So if we're thinking about a neighborhood, not at the national level, but just a local community level. So if we provide a street light on the street and any number of people can use that street light, they can walk under that street light at night. If one extra person moves to the neighborhood and occasionally walks under that street light or something like that, there's no, it, there's no marginal cost. It doesn't cost any more, so it's non-rival risk. Now, the second characteristic of a public good is that it would be non-excludable. And that basically means that you cannot prevent or force anybody so that they can't benefit from that good, that they can't enjoy the good. So, again, let's go back to if you move to Spain. So if you move to Spain, they can't say, you know what, if you aren't willing to pay for, for national defense, then you're not going to be able to benefit from national defense. That doesn't make any sense, right, because if Spain were to get attacked, the military is going to defend the country regardless of, of whether this extra person was willing to pay for that or, or not. And so really everybody can just, there's no way to force where they can't benefit from this. So think about the street light. So if you put in that street light there's, and then someone moves into the neighborhood, there's no way that you can prevent that one person from benefiting from that street light. And it, it also another example of a public good would be clean air. So if you think about clean air, let's say there was some, some invention you came up with that would allow you to clean the air for your neighborhood and provide clean air and, and, and so forth. Now, clean air is something that, think about it, it's non-rival risk. So once you've actually provided the clean air with your new invention, what's the marginal cost of an additional person in, enjoying that clean air? Well, it's zero. It costs them nothing. Any number of people in that neighborhood can enjoy the clean air once you've done that. And then it's also non-excludable. You can't, you can't prevent somebody in that neighborhood from breathing that clean air. So you say that clean air itself is, is a public good. Now, there's an issue with public goods is that they tend to be undersupplied. And the reason that they're undersupplied or, or not supplied at all in some cases is because of something known as the free rider problem. And the free rider problem is, is basically that somebody is saying, hey, if this good is just going to be prevented anyway, and there's no way that you can exclude me from enjoying it, then, then why should I pay? Why pay for something that somebody else is just going to provide and there's, there's really no way that you can prevent me from, from enjoying the benefits of, of, a, of street light or of clean air or of national defense? So, so why should I pay for that? What incentive do I have to pay for that? And so there are a couple of different solutions, but basically this is kind of provides a rationale for, for government to get involved. And, and so one solution would be for the government to come in and say, look, we're going to provide this public good ourselves, and then we're going to tax people to pay for it, or we're going to we're going to charge user fees or something, and then we can ensure that the public good is provided.